welcome to this episode of Connections, Coffee, and Confidence with me, Janice. This is a podcast about strategic communications, messaging, and content creation. Because like that trending audio in Instagram says, if you're a small business owner, you're a content creator. And whether you're creating content for your business or as a business, I know that you'll find something in this podcast to help you succeed. Today we're talking about ways to get comfortable with self-promotion. Yeah, we're going there. Did you squirm a bit? Because I totally get it. And you know, this episode isn't actually for everyone. There are people with whom my advice, well, they just won't need it. And others who, frankly, might be a little bit annoyed. And that is all okay. I invite you to go ahead and check out a different episode with strategic advice on a challenge that you actually do need to solve. This episode is for those of us who need a strategy to get comfortable showing up as ourselves when it comes to promoting our business. Not fake it till you make it either. It's just a different take on how to follow through and self-promote. If you think about your best friend, your dog, your favorite coffee chain, you probably proudly speak up on their behalf all the time without even needing to be prompted, eh? I bet you can list off all the good qualities, what makes them the best, the funniest, the smartest, or if your dog is like mine, the dumbest, in the smartest and cutest way, of course. You wouldn't even need to pause to think about it. But it's hard for most of us to do the same for ourselves. And that's unfortunate because unless you have fans who are running all over the place telling people how amazing you are and telling them often enough, with enough follow through to create the revenue to run your business, or you can hire someone to do the promotions for you, well, you need to self-promote. As P.T. Barnum said, without promotion, something terrible happens. Nothing. So we need to get comfortable with self-promotion in order to have success in business. I mean, obviously we need to do something worthwhile, but we also need people to know we do it and that it's worthwhile. And that's where the promotion comes in. Authenticity is something that gets thrown around a lot. It's aspirational, or it's a necessity to be seen as authentic. And hands up, I have said it too, mostly because I believe it. But as soon as we put a label on a quality, that quality takes on an edge, especially for those of us who are still feeling our way through how we present ourselves. And that edge can make it more difficult to show up as ourselves, ironically enough. You know, people are not all stupid. They can usually smell someone who's putting it on or who's uncomfortable a mile away. And it may not be anything overt, nothing your average bear can put their finger on, but people will feel it in their gut and they'll have a reaction. We want to build the no like trust factor. So we somehow need to work our way past that intentionality of showing up as ourselves and just naturally show up as ourselves in order to do that. Plus, once we've become more comfortable, more natural in how we show up, we'll be more likely to do it and do it consistently. And that's where a lot of gold lies in self-promotion, being consistent. Sometimes I work with a client and they are really excited about the strategy that we've created. And I know they're going to follow through because they're really comfortable showing up, creating the content, working their way through what we developed to help them reach their goals. And likewise, I can tell when that excitement is tempered with discomfort of actually having to show up and do their thing as themselves. And the follow through typically isn't great. I'll be very honest and say I can totally identify with this. I'm an introvert. And I really struggle with showing up as myself and talking about what I do. I'll tell you more about how to work around that in a few minutes. But more benefits of being comfortable showing up as yourself include that when we are comfortable, our messaging like magically appears to us. What we have to say makes sense. Like you can hear it inside or it somehow appears to you. You sit down to work it out and the key messages just fall into place when you're in that flow, when you're comfortable with what you're doing. The actual expression of your work comes more easily, more cleanly. Your delivery is much more effective. 
And when we think about all of the things that are available to us to use to promote ourselves, oh, that list is a wee bit overwhelming. And I can guarantee you, neither of us have the full list of everything under the sun. But when we're comfortable showing up, we're also comfortable with not just how we represent ourselves in our business, but also where we show up. So we don't feel that need to be everywhere because we're doing a great job of showing up where we are. I am by no means a psychologist. I'm educated enough to know I don't know very much at all. But what I do know is that none of us are homogenous. None of us are solely one thing. And maybe, strictly speaking, I shouldn't use the word none, but in the interest of this scenario, I'm going with the sweeping statement. We are as humans, multifaceted and intricate beings. It's what makes us drive each other nuts, but it's also what makes us interesting and unique. Most of us show up differently depending on the situation and the people around us. You probably dress and speak differently for a business awards gala than you would for your child's junior high award ceremony. You'd dress differently for meeting the future in-laws for the first time versus meeting your best friend for the 500th time. And you'd speak differently to someone learning the language than the person you've grown up with. And some of these choices are unconscious ones, but others are made deliberately. At the core, it's still you. It's how you present yourself and interact that's just slightly different. The persona you adopt to fit the scenario. And you already do this in your business. You don't show up to your first client meeting the same way you show up to do your paperwork. You don't speak to your business partner the way you speak to your Pilates instructor. You tailor your tone, how you deliver your message, what the message even is, considering the situation and the person. Same goes for how you represent yourself in your business when you're increasing visibility, building an audience, laying the foundations for more sales. This is where you consciously choose to adopt a persona of, well, you. When it comes to pitching yourself, showing up on social media, creating collaborations, working with people, or creating your thing, whatever your specialty is. You know the prevailing advice is to create an ideal customer avatar? And quick reminder, I really dislike that term in the way that it's intended. There's way too much room for being exclusionary and having tunnel vision when you think about who you market to. An ideal client audience is much more welcoming of different people who have similar patterns and behaviors or similar challenges that you can speak to. But in this one instance, we're going to be exclusionary and tunneled. I encourage you to develop an ideal persona. It's you. It's just the you who confidently and comfortably promotes her business. Let's explore that a little bit more. You might prefer to do this as a thought exercise while you walk the dog or work in your garden. You might want to close your office door and break out the pen and paper, whatever. But have a really good think about who you want to represent your business. How does she dress? Go shop your closet for what you feel good wearing. How does she show up? With big smiles? Full face of makeup? Ponytail and the kids in the background? Does she speak slowly and calmly? Is she the life and the soul of the party? Suave? Or maybe she doesn't mind having a laugh, even if it's at herself. When you fleshed her out a little bit, take some time and think about her. Is she someone that you would like to work with? Who you would like to spend time with? Who you would trust to help out or spend your money with? If the answer to all of these questions is not yes, then just keep working on her. When you're comfortable with her, then it's time to get comfortable being her. Okay, it sounds dissociative, I know, but roll with me here. In fact, that's almost what it might be like, as though you're playing the role of you. The brilliant and adorable you who people are clamoring to work with or buy from. Look, when I do a little shimmy on a reel, that is Instagram me. It's still me. But in real life, I'd actually be jiving to that song because I know how to jive. But no way am I doing that on a reel. Or really, anywhere outside of my kitchen or my living room anymore. 
it's still me doing the real, but it's the me I want you to see. It's the me I'm comfortable with you seeing, but it is me. Just like the way you show up wherever, whenever, is the way you decide to show up. It's not the entire you. It's not the you who got up with a crying baby for months on end because he had colic. And it's not the you who changed majors three times. It's not the you who ate a tub of ice cream last night. But it is, down deep. This person who's going to be visible in promoting your business? Well, she's just not a persona that you've recognized and accepted as of yet. And like I said, sometimes when we alter the way we show up, we do it unconsciously. So it might be kind of weird to think about doing it deliberately. And it's okay to tinker even further with these attributes that you've assigned to this persona once you've started enacting them and depending on the situation. The more you step into the role of creator, a spokesperson, as promoter, the more natural it will become. And if you listen to professional speakers or authors talk about their work, they will be the first to say they work at it. They work to show up as themselves, but as the person they want everyone to see and listen to. Why would you be any different? I think that sometimes we get wrapped up in what we see or what we hear. One of the things we know in public relations is that there are at least two filters on everything. There's the filter of the person who created the piece, whatever it might be. And there's the filter created by the recipient. What we as creators and as consumers need to remember is that those filters are in place and are not reality. And that we create those filters as much as we consume them. We don't have to be one thing to all people. And we can remain ourselves while attending to different aspects of our life. These are the benefits of being multifaceted and complex beings. This isn't a fake it till you make it deal. This is hiring a spokesperson for your business who just happens to be you. This is being that spokesperson when the situation demands it. Bringing your charm and your style and being visible to enhance your brand, no matter how uncomfortable your inner self may feel about showing up. You'll probably grow into that role the more you define it and practice it. And it may always be a deliberate action complete with a pep talk and a deep breath before putting your face or your voice out there as a signpost to your business. Either way, you're getting the job done. I hope that's helpful. And if you've gotten any value out of this or any of my other episodes, I'd love you forever if you could please leave a rating or a review wherever you're listening to this. Your kind words make an incredible difference to independent podcasters like myself. So thank you. If you want to hear some behind the scenes stories and get tips on how to include the podcast advice or topics in your own small business, I invite you to join my email list by going to janicefogarty.com, where you'll also find a mix of free and paid resources to help you with your own promotions. And until next week, my friend, have a fan freaking rest of your day.